Now, when most people think of presidential assassinations, what main presidents do you normally think of? Probably Abraham Lincoln, maybe John F. Kennedy. Those are kind of the main president assassinations that most people, I would think, would probably come up with. But I feel like there's one president who was assassinated that most people often overlook or maybe forget about, and that was President James Garfield. So we're actually here in New Jersey where he ended up dying. We're gonna walk down the road and there's a marker, a memorial where he officially died at. So let's get into the story. I feel like a lot of people don't know about this. I think it's kind of interesting, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. So James Garfield was born November 19th, 1831, and he died September 19th, 1881, at the age of 49. Now what's interesting is he actually didn't die right away from being shot during the assassination. He died several months later, but we're gonna get into all that details. Now James Garfield started out like many other former presidents by serving in the military. He uh, was in the army from 1861 to 1863. He became a major general in the army. Um, after that, he became part of the House Appropriations Committee from 1871 to 1875. Then he became a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from Ohio from 1863 to 1880. He then finally became president March 4th, 1881. So by the time he became president till the time he died, only about five or six months had passed. So he was only the president for literally five or six months. James Garfield was going on a vacation. His wife, I guess, was not doing so well. I think she was ill or something. And so he was gonna meet her here in Long Branch, New Jersey to, to rest up, to go on a kind of a small vacation, etc. Now the shooter, his name was Charles Gateau. And Charles had a long history of, of mental illness, but also not being happy with the way that the president situation was going on. He was not happy with James Garfield so he decided the only way to change things was to assassinate James Garfield. And that way they could elect the vice president at the time, whose name was Chester Arthur. James Garfield was leaving by train for New Jersey. James was leaving from the 6th Street Station of the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad. Now one of Garfield's friends and political helpers his name was blaine blaine was with him they were talking again by the train station now the two men were having a deep conversation so they did not notice charles Gateau come up behind them and again this was july 2nd 1881 charles pulled out a small revolver and shot James Garfield twice in the back. Charles was immediately jumped on and they arrested him very quickly. As Charles was being led away, he said, I did it, I will go to jail for it. I am a stalwart and Arthur will be president, meaning Chester Arthur, the vice president. One shot glanced off his arm and the other one pierced his back. And the one that pierced his back was actually the one that would ultimately prove fatal. But again, it took several months for that to happen. Now, James had requested to leave Washington, D.C. and escape the hot humidity. And so he requested in early September to move him to Long Branch, New Jersey here, which is where we are right now. And this is the same place that his wife had come earlier in the summer, the, the same time frame where he was trying to 
meet her, but then he was shot, so he couldn't actually come here. So he wanted to come back to the, the cottage area where his wife had previously spent some time. He left the White House for the last time, September 5th, traveling in a very specially designed railway car. Now, apparently this mansion or cottage um, was a different one that then his wife used previously. Apparently they had built this mansion by, by volunteers and they did it in one day, apparently. Now, after arriving at the train station, um, he was moved from the train car to the cottage here. I believe it was this cottage right here. I mean, again, that was 100, <laughs> 140 years ago, so things could have changed dramatically. But this is the spot anyway. And on September 18th, James asked a friend if he would have a place in history. The next day, James suffered from pneumonia and hypertension. He woke around 10.15 p.m. complaining of great pain in his chest. General David Swaim was watching him and after James took a drink of water, he said, oh Swaim, this terrible pain can't you stop this? And that was the last words he said. He died that night, September 19th, 1881. Now, again, as this was 140 years ago, they didn't have the, the correct tools. They didn't have the, the right technology. And also they didn't really know much about sterilizing equipment or washing hands like for doctors and so the doctors that took care of him and that were operating on him didn't sterilize their equipment and didn't really wash their hands his wound got infected and that is most likely the reason why he died was the infection caused by the unsterilized equipment unsterilized hands so obviously if this happened today he would have been just fine they would have sewn him back up and he would have lived you know a longer life um, but if you're curious they actually named this road after Garfield Garfield Terrace so Charles Gateau was born September 8th 1841 he died June 30th, 1882. So as I said, Charles had kind of become delusional, if you will. Um, he believed that he had played a major role in James Garfield's election victory. And he assumed that he should have been rewarded with some sort of consulship. And I guess he was so offended by James administrators rejecting Charles's application to serve in Vienna or Paris that he decided to kill James Garfield. Charles Gateau's trial was November 17th, 1881. And during the trial, Charles insisted that he was legally insane at the time of the shooting and he says that god apparently took away his free will however other people disagreed saying quote finally he got tired of the monotony of dead beating he wanted excitement of some other kind and notoriety and he got it so other people are saying that he was not insane at all and that he just wanted that fame and something to change his outlook on life as Charles had gotten divorced from his wife not that long before all this took place. And I read that Charles was essentially homeless. Uh, he was bouncing around from different 
shelters and 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 restaurants where he would hide in like random rooms and steal food and i guess even in the winter months like he didn't even have boots or jacket or anything like after the divorce he he had no money and was just bouncing around from random room to random room and so maybe he just wanted to get out of the lowly existence of of what he was dealing with but either way if he was insane or not he was found guilty on january 25th 1882 so only about four months or so after he killed james garfield he was sentenced to death and on june 30th 1882 he was hanged on the way to the gallows where charles was hanged people mentioned that charles was actually smiling he even shook the executioner's hand and I guess recited a poem called, I am going to the Lordy. It's one of those presidential assassinations that again, I feel like is just never talked about and it's kind of forgotten about. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, if you're new around here, my name is Harmon. I'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.